our moonwalking journey is about to come to an end and hopefully it's not going to involve us falling off the stage and if it does well we should walk normally next time instead of this walking backwards nonsense so yes the sega console versions are here and ready to be reviewed mickey j's most well-known adventure is pretty well remembered coming as it was at the genesis's early celebrity backed game push in the machine's first year in america does it and its little brother on the master system still hold up today well we shall see but first and if you haven't done so please have a look at the other two videos in the series will you else you'll be watching this next segment and thinking i'm just having a pop at jacko we're going to be looking at the chaotic last couple of decades of michael jackson's career and indeed his life that followed moonwalker it was a pair of decades that featured controversial headlines bizarre behavior and music below the standard of his impeccable early solo work rumors of plastic surgery were abound and he certainly looked almost a different person from his youth to his last few years on the planet in 1993, accusations of sex abuse hit Jackson from the father of one Jordan Chandler, a 13-year-old that Michael had befriended after renting a vehicle from the family. This had a negative effect on the health of Jackson and a $23 million settlement was made out of court. Allegations such as these would continue to dog Michael Jackson for the rest of his days and indeed since his death. In 1996, he would sing his ecological message piece, Earth Song, at the Brit Awards in London, complete with an elaborately produced stage performance that was hereby then ruined by rake-thin pulp frontman Jarvis Cocker not having any of this nonsense and wagging his bum in front of all of it. Quite the spectacle from the man in the spectacles. Michael also had three children who, and this will make you feel old, are all in their 20s now. They all went by weird names as babies, Blanket, Prince and Paris. But they don't use those names anymore, except Paris, which is the most normal of those names. The youngest child, Blanket, now called BG, was the one that was hung out the window in 2002 in a rather bizarre scene. Bubbles the chimp, his other child, eventually got a bit big and moved to a sanctuary in 2003. And well, he's still there now, supported by Michael Jackson's estate and occasionally receives visit from his, I don't know, step brothers and sisters and Latoya Jackson. The long career and the turbulent life of Michael Jackson was ended on the 25th of June 2009, when he was aged to just 50 years old. He was discovered at his home in Los Angeles having died of an intoxication related to the pain medication that he had become addicted to. In spite of his many eccentricities and his tortured life, he was an extraordinary musician with a catalogue of incredible music. So R.I.P. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker was released in 1994, the Sega, Mega Drive and the Master System. As I mentioned at the start, it was part of Sega's big first year push of their new 16-bit hardware in the States. It of course had launched well in advance of Nintendo's rival Super Nintendo system. Sports folk like Buster Douglas, Pat Riley and Joe Montana no, me neither, uh, were acquired licenses along with Jacko in the famous Genesis Does What Nintendo Don't advertising campaign. Jackson, as previously mentioned in the arcade section, worked with Sega on the coin-op after contacting them in 1988, and no doubt he had a small part to play in developing this title, which came out the same year. 
Just like the arcade version, Jackson is in his smooth criminal get-up here, and you'll spend the game wooing, dancing, and seagulling goons with your magic dust in this pristine white suit. Dangerous choice that, I hope he has a thorough shake when he next uses the toilet, otherwise he'll be all embarrassed and every girl will think he's disgusting. The viewing angle has been flipped in this one too, with a side-on view of the action. Moonwalker's gameplay on the home consoles is vastly different from the isometric viewpoint of the arcade version. In that game, Mr. Big's goons keep their kidnapped ankle biters where they can see them, right in front of them. In the Mega Drive and Master System titles, they've hidden them behind doors, bushes, gravestones, windows, and in the trunks of parked cars. And the gameplay will consist of you, as Michael Jackson, wandering the stages, looking in every nook and indeed cranny for the prepubescent nippers. On the way, he will be beset by an absolute legion of hired goons, which can be dispatched using a number of dance routine inspired moves. Each of the levels are broken up into three stages and each of these stages are finished off by finding all of the children which makes bubbles appear and sit on your shoulder and guide you to the end of the stage. Now I've got a theory here. Perhaps Bubbles knew that Jackson's interactions with children weren't okay and that maybe he was being a touch inappropriate as he seems to guide his master into a violent encounter with a battalion of Joe Pesci's evil henchmen. Bubbles, as well as having a compass that steers Michael to the end of the level, appears to have a moral compass too and wants to see his master get his head kicked in for being a bit of a funny dude with children. This encounter, should Michael shimmy his way through, marks the end of the stages and it's then on to the next dance with death. Michael can perform different moves using the magic button or just the attack button if you're playing on the master system. He can fling his hat after a little spin or if you hold it down for a bit longer all your opponents will be forced to dance until they expire. And yes, 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 it works on the dogs and is this the single best sequence of the 16-bit games era? Yes, yes it is. As good as these scenes are, you'll be draining your health bar when you try using illusionary spells too much, and so it should be used fairly sparingly. Different button combos will allow Jackson to perform his numerous dance moves, which is a really nice touch for fans of the King of Pop. He hoots and he hollers, and as a Jackson property, boy, and I do intend this pun, it hits the right notes. Throughout proceedings, you get MIDI interpretations of Michael's biggest hits, and if you're wondering, and I know Retro 48K is, the reason Thriller wasn't used on the graveyard level does have an explanation. It was featured in the initial version of the game, and indeed some of the earlier adverts. However, the song was removed and replaced by another part of me due to copyright reasons. You see, Jackson wasn't the original writer of the Thriller song, and so it was decided to head off any extra payment or legal issues with songwriter Rod Templeton. So in the end, they just decided to remove the song from the game. Special mention must go to level two on the Master System, where your main adversary is apparently a gang of Stone Cold Steve Austins. In the spirit of how weird the movie is, the game ends with Jacko turning into a camp-looking robot to blast Mr. Big's goons before a short shooter level closes the game as Mickey again changes this time into a spaceship for a battle in the upper atmosphere. In the Mars System 1, Michael has to fend off a weaponized mountain. Boy, drug dealing makes you a lot of money if you can afford an attack spaceship or weaponize a mountain. For the most part, however, Moonwalker is a fairly playable clone of the original Shinobi game. The short, compact levels with neat touches are what this game is all about. And Jackson moves in a smooth and well-animated manner. It's a game that rewards repeated plays as if the wrong window or door is opened, then you might end up getting a face full of knife from a goon or a bomb will blow up in your face. It will put an end to your pop megastar ways, so it will. 
This is a particularly tricky issue for people playing the Master System version for the first time. Those knife men do not give you a chance to move out the way before they've stuck their blade in between Michael's rib cage. Another issue is, as cool as those moves look, a lot of them will sort of whiff due to the range or the height of your reversaries. The Dobermans, as great and funny as they were earlier, are right pains in the bum should they start diving about, and Michael's hat and punching motions will just miss them. Difficulty isn't particularly tricky, and your original $34.99 price that you might have paid for it when it came out might have felt like a poor investment after a couple of days when you see the ending sequence. I don't think Moonwalker is a bad game. It's certainly a decent earlier Mega Drive effort. But Revenge of Shinobi, remember, came out the year before. And it's such a better game than this. Of the same type, from the same game company, that Moonwalker just pales in comparison. I understand the nostalgia, but it's not Revenge of Shinobi, or anywhere near it. It doesn't do enough beyond the same repetitive gameplay, well, until right at the end. And although there is variance between the levels, a lot of the stages are very similar within those levels. Reviews for both versions were generally positive at the time. Sega Power in their issue 17 gave it a 90% and said that Moonwalker has loads of brilliant gimmicks, but it is an excellent game as well. Bad? Definitely not. Mean Machines gave the Master System version an 80% in their January 1990 issue. They described it as an accomplished Jackson license, begging for a more varied game design. Later reviews though, they weren't nearly as kind. IGN reviewed it in 2008 and they said this. This bit of vanity simply falls apart due to pure laziness. The whole thing collapses into banality. And well, I'm inclined to agree. So this wouldn't be Michael Jackson's final foray into video games, as he made appearances in Sega's Space Channel 5 and as an unlockable fighter in Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2. Indeed, even after his death, he still wasn't finished with games, as Ubisoft released Michael Jackson the experience for the Nintendo consoles, which were instantly forgettable rhythm action efforts. So yes, Moonwalker. Never before has there ever been a more strange and peculiar movie with so many games based around it, most of which aren't awful. Hee <laughs> hee! Still didn't get it right right at the end. Anyway, if you like more of my rubbish, please stick around, like, subscribe, and case thanks bye. <laughs>